YouTube, Chrissy G here. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are having a wonderful and blessed day, week, month. I mean, it's all blending together at this point, guys. <laughs> so I hope that you're blessed, okay? And I hope that you guys are maintaining and are trying to have a positive outlook in this uh, current situation and climate that we are in. So I have another story time for you guys. I'm going to try to keep it um, in a good time frame. But basically, I have just been thinking in this season um, and being still and everything, um, what God desires, right? And um, if you follow me on social media, you'll know that I've been talking about taking advantage of the access that we have to God in this season. Um, and does that mean that we don't always have this access to God? Absolutely not. But I feel that we are now in a place where there are less distractions and less things keeping us from taking advantage of the access that we have to God, right? So I got to thinking about my past and how in the past when I was single, um, before I got married, me and God, whew, we was like this. We were like this. I used to talk to God as if he was my best friend, as I, I was talking to a friend on the phone. And there was never a time that I was not in communication with him and not intimately connected to him. And God revealed to me recently, basically that I've lost that, right? And that it's time to get back to the basics, you know, to go back to square one, where I longed for that relationship and that encounter with God. And God is like, well, what happened to that? What happened to you? What happened to us? You know, why has our relationship not been as deep you know, and as impactful as it used to be in your past. And I had to kind of sit and wonder, why? Why have I not been deeply rooted in God the way that I used to be? That's not to say that I don't have an active prayer life and I don't worship and I don't read the word, but it's not like it was when I was single and when I didn't have, you know, all these responsibilities and all these things. And so God is saying, you can still have that with me, even with all your responsibilities, even with everything that the world is throwing at you, you can still have that intimate bond with me. So what is the difference? And then the spirit revealed to me, it's desperation, desperation. I stopped being desperate for that connection. I stopped being so thirsty for God, like a man in the desert with no water in sight. I stopped becoming desperate and longing for God, for that intimacy, for that relationship. And God was like, ah, there it is. So when did you stop being desperate for me? When did you stop seeing me as your end all be all? When did I become less than in your life? So that is my question to you, because I know, you know, I have allowed many things to take place, or I should say more so take the forefront of where God should be in my life. And so I am now getting to a place where, God, I'm desperate for you. I am desperate for you. I mean, I am, thir <clears throat> I am thirsty, okay? To just be in the presence of God. And this is not about religion. Let me be clear. God is not calling us to a religious state of mind. And I think that's where a lot of Christians miss the mark. God is not interested in your rituals. God is not interested in your amens and hallelujahs when they're not backed with a longing and a desperation for him. You get what I'm saying? God wants relationship, not religion. God wants to see your heart so torn and broken for him that it is to a point where only he can put you back together. God wants us to be desperate for him, where we're willing to abandon all of the idols that we have created in our lives that have taken the place of him. 
That's what God revealed to me. And I wanted to share with you guys because I know that there's someone else in the same boat that I am in. If you are wondering why you don't feel like your prayers are getting answered or why you feel like God has distanced himself from you or why you feel as though your life is not evident of the glory of God or the divine encounter of God, then let me clear the air for you. How desperate are you for God? How is your life an example of a man or a woman that is constantly chasing after the face of God, wanting to be near him, wanting to be connected to him, wanting to be intimately enveloped in God. Because if you are not an example of that, then that is where you have missed the mark. God didn't move. Mm -mm. God didn't go anywhere. God didn't turn his back on us. We turned our backs on him. We allowed our cell phones and we allowed television shows and we allowed songs and we allowed cars and money and trifles to take the place of our Heavenly Father. We created modern idols and we're wondering why God has forsaken us. We forsook God. We are no longer desperate for God because society tells us that we no longer need Him. That we can do bad all by ourselves right? That your success was by your doing and your doing only. That your car, your house, your bank account, that's all you. You worked hard. You grinded. But we need to be reminded that we have what we have because God allows us to have it. And at the point that we allow these things to take the place of God, he can easily take it away, right? So don't be fooled by the enemy and the flashy things. Get to a place even now that we are desperate for God and that we are longing for God. God has allowed us to be stripped of a lot of distractions in this season because he wants us to take advantage of the access that we have to him. He wants to see that we are desperate for him. He wants to feel that we are longing for him and that our heart breaks every moment that we do not feel divinely and intimately connected to him. So that's my story. That's my story. And I no longer want to be in a position where I'm like, God, we used to be so tight. Like what happened? I no longer want to be in a place where I'm questioning my allegiance. I no longer want to be in a place where I'm treating God as if he is an option and not a priority. God should always be a priority in your life. And if he's not, then you're not desperate enough for him. You're not thirsty enough for him. And I guarantee you all the things that you are chasing will never quench your thirst. Because you're not tapping into the living waters that God is offering. So that you can never have to thirst again. So I hope that my story enlightened and blessed you so that you come to a place of true desperation and longing for God because God really wants to connect with you right now. He really wants to connect with you in this season. I pray, I pray, pray, pray wholeheartedly that you listen to my words. God wants you. He wants to connect with you. He wants to abide in you and he wants for you to abide in him. He wants you to lay down all of the idols that you have created for yourself. And he wants to take the forefront of your life. He wants you to focus on him. Not on the things that continue to distract us. So I challenge you today to start breaking down those walls and those barriers that you have erected that have covered and prevented you from seeing the fullness of God in your life. And I want you even now to start making room for God and start making God a priority in your life. God wants to see your desperation. God wants to visit you and he wants to be a part of your life, but you've got to make room for him and you've got to be thirsty for him as a deer pants for the water. Show God what he means to you today and let him take precedence in your life. 
Let me pray for you guys. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, O oh God, for the divine revelation of what we have been missing. And that is a thirst and a longing for you, O oh God. Heavenly Father, you have shown us, O oh God, that we have not been desperate for you, that we have not been seeking you, that we have not been longing for you, O oh God, but we have allowed silly trifles, O oh God, to take the place of you. We have erected idols, O oh God, and pushed you to the wayside, O oh God. We have even made the church an idol. We worship religion. We worship rituals. We worship titles. We worship cars and money and phones and distractions, oh God. And we've left no room for you. So Heavenly Father, I pray that in this season, if there is someone listening to the sound of my voice, oh God, I pray that even now you are breaking down the walls, oh God, that you are helping them, oh God, to navigate the idols that they have created and to tear them down, oh Heavenly Father, so that they can see you, so that there is only you, oh God. And if ever there is anything in our lives that we have made a priority over you, oh God, I tear it down and I break it down in Jesus' name, oh God. And I pray, oh Lord, that you will establish your kingdom in our hearts and in our minds, O oh God. Heavenly Father, I am sorry and I repent, O oh God, for ever treating you as if you were an option, for ever treating you as if you were something to be trifled with, for ever treating you, O oh God, as if you were not important, as if my very breath and life does not depend on your will. Heavenly Father, I pray, O oh God, that today we take advantage of the access that we have to you, O oh God, and that we, O oh God, are renewed in your spirit and in your might, O oh God, that we bathe ourselves in your light, O oh Heavenly Father, and that we never turn back again, that when we are re-released into this world, O oh God, may nothing be the same, O oh God, because a true encounter with you means that I will never be the same. And let my life be an example and a reflection of that encounter and a reflection of your glory, O oh God. I thank you, O oh God, for the offering of your love. I thank you, O oh God, for the offering of salvation. I thank you, O oh God, for the water that you are offering me so that I may never thirst again. You are awesome, God. And we thank you for the access that we have to you. And I pray, oh God, that more and more people become enlightened, oh God, and see that all we are missing is a desperation and longing for you so that we may be whole, so that we may be healed, and so that we may be abiding in you always. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I pray that this video blessed you and I pray that you're inspired to truly seek God in this season, to be silent and not fill the void and this time of being at home with frivolous things as binge watching TV shows and listening to music that doesn't edify and uplift God because God wants us to be still in this moment. He wants us to have moments of worship. He wants us to see what he has to say about our lives in his word and he wants us to seek him for ourselves so that he can show us great and mighty things. So I hope that this blesses you and I hope that it encourages you to be desperate for God in a more meaningful way. Love you guys.